Hello once again, Bumblebee friends. I'm the resident emo girly, Alexa, and happy to return today for another fantastic deep dive into history. Families, am I right? Some are healthy, some are dysfunctional, and some are better off just not existing. Now, once again, I have some words I can't say here in YouTube land, the most important today being the M word for death. So for simplicity's sake, whenever I refer to death as uh, death, just assume that's what I'm referring to. Now that we're all clear, welcome to the top 10 most dangerous crime families in history. Kicking off this list in 10th place, we have the American Bonanno crime family. As one of the five families that dominate organized crime in the New York region, their history is longer than I am, so I promise I'll do my very best to keep this concise. Bonanno family was seen as the most brutal of the five families during the 20th century, so they're definitely a group to uh, steer clear of. The origins of this crime family can be traced back to the town of Castellamar del Golfo located in the province of Trapani, Sicily, their boss Giuseppe Pepe Bonanno, and his older brother and advisor Stefano. I'm not Italian, but I'm trying my best. The clan's strongest ally was the leader of the Magadino clan, Stefano Magadino, the brother of Joseph's maternal grandmother. During the 1900s, the two clans feuded with Felice Bucolato, the boss of the Bucolato clan. In 1902, Stefano arrived in New York and became a powerful member of the Castellamaris clan. After the uh, deaths of Stefano and Giuseppe, their younger brother, Salvatore, took revenge by killing members of the Bugalatos. In 1903, Salvatore married Catherine Bonventre, and on January 18th of 1905, she gave birth to Joseph Bonanno, the future kingpin of this family. Now, three years later, Salvatore moved his family to New York City and began establishing dominance and control in the Castellamaris community of Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Now, while operating in Brooklyn, the leaders were able to secure the criminal organization's future. As of 2017, the family has 110 established members and over 500 associates. They've been responsible for numerous assassinations and um, accidental deaths over the years, to the point where I spent half an hour today trying to count them and I kept getting lost, and that was with a Red Bull in my system. I'll highlight one thing though, leadership in this mob family mostly changes through the death of a previous leader, and I counted around 20 or so bosses over the years. Power ain't always a great thing. In ninth place we have the House of Borgia. Believed to be the first ever criminal family, they were an Italian Aragonese Spanish noble family who rose to prominence during the Italian Renaissance. During the reign of Pope Alexander VI, formerly known as Rodrigo Borgia, they were suspected of many crimes, including, but not limited to, adultery, incest, simony, theft, bribery, and um, killings, mostly from the liberal use of arsenic. Now, because of their grasping for power, they meet enemies of the Medici, the Sforza, and the Dominican friar Girolamo Savonarola, amongst others. I promise I'm trying here. The Borgia family stands out in history as being infamously steeped in sin and immorality, and I can see why. Now, going back to the mention of Alexander VI's reign, it is reported that the Borgia hosted orgies in the Vatican Palace, banquet of chestnuts being considered one of the most disreputable balls of this kind, with reports of 50 courtesans in attendance for the entertainment of the banquet guests. It is alleged that not only was the Pope present, but also two of his children, Lucrezia and Cesare, were. An orgy? In the Vatican? I'm just gonna back up here. I'm begging for anyone with a time machine to loan me one so I can view that, cause like, that boggled my mind. I grew up in the Roman Catholic Church, like this is just bonkers. Also, yeah, this Pope had kids, something I had to read five times to understand. While he was a cardinal, Pope Alexander maintained a long-term illicit relationship with Venosa de Catani, with whom he had four children, Giovanni, Cesare, Lucrezia, and Geoffrey. Now, Rodrigo also had children by other women, including one daughter with his mistress, Giulia Farnese. Now, speaking of those offspring, Cesare went on to kill Giovanni in hopes of gaining more power within the family, and was successful on that front. Lucrezia was a notorious poisoner, and she became famous for her skill at political intrigue, also the mysterious deaths and disappearances of her husbands. Okay, look, I've got a soft spot for Black Widow killers, okay? In eighth place, we have the Bongo family. Now, while he was four years old in 1969, Bobby Bongo woke up on Christmas morning to a heavy metal wrench in a plain brown paper bag under the tree. Later that day, he and his brothers used the wrench to break into a local grocery store and steal pop, making his father, a career criminal who went by the name Rooster, proud. Now, the Bongo family crime spree spanned over four generations and crossed multiple states, from Texas to Oregon, beginning in the early 1920s with ancestors who were moonshiners and carnival workers, and involved hundreds of felonies covering just about every genre of lawlessness, from death and sodomy to burglary and insurance fraud. They stole everything, from chickens and cows to lumber and metal, and once broke into a government-run fish hatchery just to gorge themselves on salmon. When the children were barely in middle school, they were already stealing really, really, really big trucks. Now, unlike other vicious families on 
this list. Being part of a close, loving, and supportive family is what made them what they are. Granted, nobody in this family was especially bright. They killed people and then would make calls to their mom from the victim's home phone. They once melted a stolen safe with a torch and then tried to spend the burnt money. I feel like y'all get the gist of it. But yeah, that's a heck of a family legacy. In seventh place, we have the beginning of the Mongol Empire. Now, Genghis Khan rose from obscurity in a small corner of the Mongolian steppe to form the largest land empire in history. For the Mongols, the family was the central pillar of society. Now, Genghis's sons and then grandsons extended the empire to reach from the western shores of the Black Sea to the Pacific. The Mongols, often outnumbered, conquered through their mastery of tactics and psychological warfare. If a city or an entire people surrendered, they would treat them well and allow them to enjoy the fruits of a secure world. If the people uh, resisted the Mongol advance, they and their cities would feel the full fury of the enraged invaders. Despite all the violence that took place as they extended their rule, once the Mongols were in power, their lands were, I guess, safe and well controlled? In many cases, this apparently represented a distinct um, improvement from previous conditions. Subjects had considerable personal liberty, such as the freedom to follow their own religion, but at what cost? Some experts calculate that 11% of the world's population died because of the Mongol expansion. In sixth place, we have the Genovese crime family. Yep, another one of the New York Five families. Also referred to as the West Side, they were founded by Charles Lucky Luciano in 1931 until being renamed after boss Vito Genovese in 1957. Originally in control of the waterfront on the west side of Manhattan, as well as the docks and the Fulton Fish Market on the East River waterfront, the family was run for years by Vincent the Chin Gigante, who feigned insanity by shuffling unshaven through New York's Greenwich Village wearing a tattered bathrobe and muttering to himself incoherently to avoid prosecution. Hey, if it works, it works. The Genovese family is the oldest and largest of the five families. Finding new ways to make money in the 21st century, the family took advantage of lax due diligence by banks during the housing bubble with a wave of mortgage frauds. They appear to be the most organized and powerful family in the US, with sources believing that Laborio Barney Belomo is the current boss of the organization. Unique in today's mafia, the family has benefited greatly from members following Omerta, a code of conduct emphasizing secrecy and non-cooperation with law enforcement in the justice system. While many mobsters from across the country have testified against their crime families since you know, the 1980s, this family has had only 11 members and associates turn on them in its history. They're known for crimes of <clears throat> racketeering, killing, labor union infiltration, extortion, illegal gambling, loan sharking, bookmarking, ooh, truck hijacking, fraud, women of the night, bribery, and more. That's a long enough list, thanks. In fifth place, we have the Ptolemies of Ancient Egypt. They ruled between 305 to 30 BC and are responsible for such a long list of mysterious deaths that I had no choice but to include them on today's list. While they ruled Egypt, they were actually of Greek descent and Greek speaking, but adopted the traditional practice of Egyptian rulers that uh, married their siblings or close family members. They viewed family members as a fight to the death, where you constantly try to eliminate your closest relatives before they did it to you. Oh, and since the men in this dynasty were all literally named Ptolemy, but the whatever number, I'll just be referring to them by P and their number to avoid getting confused. Ready? <clears throat> P the fourth killed his mother, who had previously killed her mother because he was having an affair with her mother. Don't worry, that statement originally confused me as well, but it's only going downhill from here. He then married his sister Arsinoe III, who was immediately killed after her husband slash brother's death. Her son, P V, had his mother's killers ripped to pieces by a mob. P the seventh was either killed by his uncle or his father, we're not quite sure which one's which. P the eighth married Cleopatra II, but began an affair with her daughter, Cleopatra III. He had his son cut into pieces and then sent them to his mother, Cleopatra II. His daughter killed her sister, Cleopatra IV. P the ninth tried to kill his mother, Cleopatra III, and then married first one, and then another sister, both called Cleopatra. I thought my life was rough because I sadly share a name with, you know, a stupid Amazon gizmo, but at least I'm not surrounded by a million people with one of two names. P the tenth married the daughter of P the ninth, Berenice the third. P the eleventh also married Berenice the third, who was either his sister or his mother or both. However, after 19 days of marriage, he had her killed and was promptly torn to pieces by an enraged Greek mob. I'll stick with my dysfunctional family. Thanks. I like not being killed or marrying my brother. In fourth place, we have the Gonzalez sisters. Now, the four Gonzalez sisters ran a successful brothel business from 1945 until the police closed it down in 1964. The woman who worked for the sisters often did not do so voluntarily. The Gonzalez family had kidnapped some, while others had answered advertisements for housemaids. When the woman arrived at the brothel, the sisters would often force heroin on those who were reluctant to provide the services that the sisters demanded. Sadly, when the girls became unable or reluctant to work and satisfy their clients, the sisters killed them. If the client turned up with a lot of money, he too 
you might end up dead with his cash stolen. When the police raided the property, they found the bodies of 80 women and 11 men. Now, there were probably many more victims that they just couldn't find. The Mexican court sentenced the sisters to 40 years in prison. Fun fact, Guinness World Records has named them the most prolific uh, death partnership. In third place, we have the Scottish Bean Clan. While that might sound like some kind of yummy dish, this sadly isn't a recipe channel. They were a 45-member clan in Scotland in the 16th century that killed and feasted on over a thousand people over 25 years. Now, according to legend, Bean and his clan members were eventually caught by a search party sent by King James VI and executed for their heinous crimes. Alexander Bean was born in East Lothian during the 16th century, where he eventually met a vicious woman named Black Agnes Douglas, who shared his inclinations and was accused of being a witch. After some robbing and the consumption of one of their victims, the couple ended up at a coastal cave in Banane Head between Gervan and Balantre. The cave was 200 yards deep, and the entrance was blocked by water during high tide, so the couple was able to live there undiscovered for some 25 years. Sonny and Agnes produced six daughters, eight sons, 14 granddaughters, and 18 grandsons. And yep, the grandchildren were products of keeping it in the family if you catch my drift. This clan thrived by laying careful ambushes at night to rob and end individuals or small groups, bringing the bodies back to their cave where the corpses were dismembered for dinner. They pick up the leftovers in barrels and discarded what they didn't need, which would sometimes wash up on nearby beaches. This strategy was used to help conceal their crimes and lead villagers to believe animals who were attacking travelers. The body parts and disappearances did not go completely unnoticed by the local villagers, but the clan stayed in their cave by day and took their victims at night, so most villagers were unaware of their existence. The clan was eventually captured alive and executed without trial, as people saw them as, you know, subhuman and unfit for one. Sonny and his fellow men had their genitalia cut off and thrown into fires, their hand and feet severed, before being left to die. Agnes and the rest of the women were tied to stakes and burned alive, which makes sense for the time period. In second place, we have the Gang of Amazons. Anessa, along with her husband Roman Potkavev, and daughters Victoria and Anastasia, officially began their death spree in 2008, until they were apprehended in 2013, but some outlying deaths date back to 1998. Now, beginning on February 17th of 2008, in Aksai, the family ended Mikhail Zlindev, head of Information Security Department of the State Control Service, and his wife in their home. While we know how they killed them, I can't describe the implements used, other than saying one is traditionally used for chopping veggies, and the other one makes a kaboom noise. Later that year, in July, in the same region but on the highway, the posse used that kaboom device again to derail a vehicle containing Rostovitz Alexei Sazonov and Julia Vasileya, ending the life of one and seriously wounding the other. The family stole a purse with a driver's license and a passport. On March 10th of 2009, in the outskirts of Novochokhsk, the family broke into a house and killed the two residents who lived there. They first kaboomed them and before finishing them off with that uh, cooking utensil I mentioned before. The family took passports, a laptop, a camera, Camera, women's boots, and a man's jacket. In July of that same year, the family overpowered and kaboomed Lieutenant Colonel Dmitry Shudakov, his wife, and their son while they were parked on the shoulder of the road. Well, their daughter Veronica was impaled 37 times. They didn't strike again until 2010, when they gouged out the eyes of two young women before taking their lives. On September 19th of 2012, in Novochokhsk, the family killed 26-year-old Vladimir Mandrik and 22-year-old Vasily Kempforin, two employees of a private security company who responded to alarms going off at a local dental clinic. The family took the security guard's service weapons. Uh, alright, that's enough from this family. They were eventually apprehended and viewed their crimes as nothing wrong, just another day at the office. I'll stick with my happy office, thanks. In first place, we have the Bender family. While they have a popular moniker as well, well, I can't mention the other word. Just know that it starts with B and refers to human fluid. They were a family of serial killers who lived and operated in Lebec County, Kansas from May of 1871 to December of 1872. The family consisted of John Bender, his wife Elvira, and their son John Jr. and daughter Kate. While there's no definitive number, estimates report that the Benders killed at least a dozen travelers before their crimes were discovered. Unsuspecting visitors to the family's bed and breakfast would be hypnotized by Kate to stay for dinner and would be given a seat of honor at the table that was positioned over a trap door into the cellar. With the victims back to the curtain, Kate would distract the guest while John or his son came from behind the curtain and struck the guest on the right side of the skull with a hammer. One of the women would cut the victim's throat to ensure death, and the body was then dropped through the trap door. Once in the cellar, the body would be stripped and later buried somewhere on the property, often in the orchard. Although some of the victims were wealthy, other carried little of value on them, and the benders had simply killed for the thrill. I can recommend much better hobbies if anyone out there is in need of a thrill. More than a dozen bullet holes were found in the roof and sides of the cabin. Now the media speculated that some of the victims attempted to fight back, but we don't know. The fate of the family remains unknown to this day. They managed to avoid being captured, and while tales of possible spottings or captures of members are many, none were ever confirmed. And that brings us to the end of our list today. My chosen family might be a chaotic group of performers, but I'm suddenly glad none of us are serial killers. 
Okay, technically my chosen older brother is a vampire, but that's a very long story for another day. As usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see y'all next time I buzz in here at Bumblebee.